Hey guys, it's Brett Burns with Prepared Man. I'm doing the In the Bush Final Challenge. It's down to me and Talon Jane. Our first challenge was a one stick friction fire. It's just not one of those things that you're going to be able to reliably do in a timely fashion. So we've moved on to an alternate assignment and it's a set of videos that we're going to do throughout the week. So there's going to be four or five of these videos in rapid succession. Our first video is to construct a 5C's kit. Now, the 5C's kit is a kit that has been popularized. It wasn't originated by, but it was popularized by Dave Canterbury of Wilderness Outfielders and the Pathfinder School. Now, it contains a cutting tool, cordage, combustion, cover, and a container. Cutting tool, cordage, combustion, container, cover. Those are the things that we're going to create. There's no reason that you would ever have to create these in the wild if you're just even vaguely prepared. I mean, I have a knife in my vehicle, I have an ax in my vehicle all the time. The 5C's kit is built around batoning, which is an idiotic practice to rely on heavily. But at the same time, I do know how to do it. I'm gonna build a kit here just using some scrap metal and this bench grinder. I think the bench grinder is okay. If you're in nature, if you're gonna be out in the field somewhere, a good sandstone and some time, you can sharpen and reprofile an edge. But, while I'm in an area in southeastern Kentucky, we don't have a lot of chert, we don't have a lot of flint, but we do have a lot of rednecks that have garages and places that they're working on old cars and four-wheelers, and a bench grinder is a staple there. We've got a nice Delta bench grinder here that we're going to use today. We're going to use that to fashion our cutting tool and also work on our combustion tool, so just stick with me. I actually put an edge on this horseshoe and I've chosen a horseshoe for its baton ability and I'll show you why a little later. So I'm going to put an edge all the way across the top kind of like an axe edge and down one side and I'll use that as my cutting tool. So I'm going to high speed this once I get started. If my camera dies or I run out of time I'll come back to the finished product. So first thing I'm going to do, I am a shop teacher by heart so I'm going to actually put on my vision protection I've got my eye protection on. I'm not wearing loose clothing. I do wear button-up shirts most of the time. So I'm gonna flip up these guides. I'm gonna do the straight grind first and then I'll do the sharpening. We'll rev up to speed.
cutting tool. It's primitive. It'll definitely get the job done. the smooth metal now I'll show you one side this is the unfinished side this is the new side let's grab a piece of flint we'll see if it works there's my sparks okay guys my container is next to my five C's I'm gonna make it out of this can that I got off the, the garbage this could be a can off the side of the road any metal container I also found this big nail and we'll use that to punch a hole in the sides to make a bail because I think that's essential to a container to have a bail. So I'll just stick this in here and I'll just leave this right on the ground and bang a rock off of it. One side and pretty much. 
pretty much over on the other side. There we go. Now, why I hang this over the fire instead of actually putting a wire bale in it if I couldn't find one, I just jam a stick through these two holes and tie my cordage to that stick. And that would allow me to pour a lot easier as well, if it's especially if it's a forked stick. And I'll show you that in my finished product. So there's my container. Make sure that it's unlined. If it is lined, you'll have to burn it out. I have boiled in these before and it's fine. So you don't have to burn these out. So there's my third seed container. This provides me with a quick 20, 25 feet. I've got everything from fine vines, fine cordage for uh, lashing, which would be this end of the vine here. It's tough stuff. And then my big cordage would be the finished product. Like I said, I did move for this final challenge. And you'll see I've got I've got worlds from this one vine. I pulled it right off the side of the road. This grows in the woods as well. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. We got an easy. Okay guys, we're gonna kind of wrap this kit up with our 5C. So far we've come in at a whopping zero dollars due to garbage and just pickups. If I couldn't find a piece of flint, because flint is not very plentiful in Kentucky, even though I did pick that piece up, anywhere that gravel has ever been dumped. So if you're lost in the woods and you're on a log road and you find where they've dumped gravel, there's going to be a rock that'll throw sparks. All I gotta do is find a rock that'll throw sparks. So once I actually fashion my, my steel, my combustion device, I'm just gonna go around and start beating rocks. Rocks that look slick, rocks that look like they're either an igneous rock or a metamorphic rock is what I'm going to look for. So let's talk about our last couple pieces which is cordage. I showed myself harvesting some vines earlier. This is would be my fine cordage. I practice cordage diversity. I carry more than one kind of cordage. This would be my fine cordage for my five C's and this is sinew. Now this is not artificial sinew. I actually harvested this from a deer kill and an archery kill that uh, was killed in youth season by a good friend of mine and I asked him if I could harvest the sinew and after I harvested it it came out with one tendon about yay long and I dried it and then I processed it down to this point and did a two strand twist to make some longer fibers it's not very long but this is strong stuff and I could use this for primary repairs to, to other kits that I would have or fine lashings to fashion weapons. So this is my sinew for my fine tool. I'm still in at zero dollars. I'm gonna lay this up here with my kit. We have our vines. This is Virginia creeper that I could use for fine lashings. Now you do have to kind of aware of this because it can give a reaction like dermatitis I've been told and it can give you a rash. But this stuff is tough. This is something that's great for me to use as a pot hanger. This doesn't cause me to break out so I could use this as the top of my lashing because it does break, it is brittle, but it's also tough and I can use this as a cordage. So that's one cordage I can use as well. Zero dollars. I have my coarse cordage that I could use as a ridge line or to fashion my traps like my spring pole. This is a smoke vine but you know let's face it I'm not going to make a ridge line. I'm going to use a ridge pole with my setup. I have 25 feet of this, maybe close to 30 when I start counting the finer pieces. And I'm just going to test all of this until it breaks. So I'm going to cut a good section of this off for my final kit, 15, 20 feet, and call it good at that. I have a lot of it. So that's my cordage. My final piece is the actual piece that I'm going to use that costs money. This is my, my 12 cent 55 gallon drum liner. It's three mil. This is going to be my cover element and all I'm going to do is take it apart, use my cutting tool to split it down the middle and that's going to make a very small tarp. Now with that shelter, I'm going to be looking at a natural shelter. But this cover element, this provides me a permeable barrier that I can put over top of my head if I need to. I can use it as a poncho. I'd actually carry two of these, so that put me up to 24 cents for my total, my devices. Any of these tools that I've made, I could use to sharpen rock for. I could, I could, I could sit down on a sandstone and just sweep back and forth. 
So let's do a rundown of my final kit. We'll talk about weight, cost, and size, and we'll wrap up from there. Stick with me. Okay, guys, here's my 5C's kit as it's compiled. Here is my container. It's just an old soup can. This would be garbage beside the road or, or old campsite refuse if you're in the National Force. I've got tulip poplar bark for my medium cordage because I am practicing cordage diversity. I have sinew for repairs and, and fine tasks. I have for my combustion tool flint and steel I made from a uh, old piece of a file. This would be a broken file from garbage. The end has been sharpened in Kiridashi style just to uh, use as a gutting implement or or to split bark to process bark. I'm actually going to put this in my haversack. This is handy. I'll show you that it does work. I hope to God you can see this on camera because it does work. I have thrown sparks with it. It's not as good as my Francis Kirk striker but nothing is. There you go. Plenty of sparks. The kit does work. I don't even think I was on camera. Let's try it again. Can you see that thing? It does work. So that's my combustion tool. Cattail or something like that would be great for fire. But I don't have to provide sure flame. I just have to do a combustion tool. This is also is one of my cutting tools. You'll see that I sharpened that with a little bit of a steep saber type grind. My horseshoe that I, I milled down and cut a, a convex edge on. This could be done just by rubbing back and forth on a rock I done with a grinder for time. That'll sit down in here as well. And my cover element. 55 gallon drum liner. I'll take it up to a quarter maybe. Coarse cordage for ridge lines and my spring pole snare if, or my spring pole spear trap if I was actually going to do that for some reason. So this is my entire kit, my 5C's. I'm going to guess that it's way under two pounds, but I will weigh it and I'll throw the caption up here down at the bottom. This has been Brett Burns with Prepared Man and the End of the Bush Challenge. This is my first entry, guys. Okay, there's my two pieces here. I'm going to use my big tool and what's left of that tool popper to make me a ridge pole. Now, my ridge pole is going to be a little big because I think the easiest shelter I can build will eliminate the need for a ridge line as well. shelter and my shelter is going to lay out that way and I'll show it to you when I get it completed. First, good. Now if you use your 5C kit for long-term survival, uh, you're A, there's only two outcomes. You're either going to get better than I am, which is probably not that hard, or you're going to get dead. So, long-term survival, if you're watching this at home, please, 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 use, use your own judgment come up with a better plan than relying on sticks and plastic bags. Let me move this camera a little bit so you can watch me finish just setting the shelter up. I actually had to travel quite a distance just to make sure I had plenty of places I could run power out here. These long videos kill my battery. And I set this sucker up and don't have anything to show for it. This is going to be the end of my first one. You can see.
see. I'm gonna come right off of that with the next one. First, I gotta use this other ridge pole. Or, what I'm gonna use, just to show you that I use it, this piece of coarse cordage that I, I made earlier from that vine. And this would be part of that five seed kit. Let's use the cordage, this piece of cordage, my coarse cordage, from the actual kit itself, the little over two pound kit that I made. Just so you know that it's usable. And we're going to use the other cordage later. So. Let's see. One thing with natural cordage and something I've talked to people about since I did the, the trapping challenge, you don't want your knot, knot to be restricted for the natural cordage. So that's kind of a loose knot, even though it is a knot that I can use. Come off this with my stake. Got plenty of stakes here. Right now, the hardest part is going to be keeping up with my five C's. So, here we go. A little close up of me making this steak just so you can see that this is sharp and it does cut. You know what? This horseshoe knife is a beast. Sharpen that down enough to make me a steak just to pierce the ground. So there's my cutting tool. Now we'll pop that bad boy back in here. That's going to allow me to take off this coarse cordage in the back. I'm just going to wind it around. Because all that's going to do is, is keep that up off the ground. Leave this number tied to it. Yeah. Even if you're setting up a tent, you're going to adjust your stakes multiple times just to make everything the most effective that it can be. I don't know if you guys can still see me. Can you? Yeah, I hope so. I think so. And all I'm doing to end this fashion is splitting this bag. So, in case you're wondering, I'm just splitting the bag into two pieces tying straight onto my cordage. Okay, go. I got my first piece done. Ooh, it's a up here. That's to be expected. And that'll give me an opportunity to use some other items from my kit here in just a minute. But first, just to make sure I'm going to get in to stop and keep adjusting this camera. Yeah, I'll be in. This is my other plastic bag. Drum liner. And since everything's going to be running down under, I shouldn't split this bag again. I'm going to lap this bag that's higher up on my ridge line. So this bag will actually sit on top of this bag so rain will drop that way. I encourage anybody overnight like this especially if you get bored with your gear and you find yourself just testing gear just to be testing gear pull over not like this you'll appreciate anything you have i don't care what it is how crappy it is you'll appreciate it all because this is one of those situations where you're just going to hunker down and prepare for the suck hole here. Hold that tight. 
same thing up here at the upper side. Which will hold straight through both sides. It's kind of like a staple. And I'm ready to show you the inside of my shelter. So come with me. Let me get you untethered. We're now running off this precious battery power. This would be the inside of my overnight shelter. Now, I'm going to adjust the tripod and show you that this is adequate and it will work. So, I, mean, I know you're kind of getting jarred around here. I am sorry about that. I've done is I've built sort of like a one-sided plow point if you can see and inside I'm going to take one of these light sticks off of what was left of my tulip poplar and when I get inside I'm actually I'm actually already out of the elements the part that I'm going to have to worry about is where those bags lap over. And that is where the stick comes in. So I'm actually going to prop the center up to give myself some space. I could also do this by putting in another ridge pole, which would probably be most effective, or using this pass through where I punch holes through both sides of the plastic. But this is effective use of my 55 gallon drum liner for shelter or my cover device for my microclimate. Another way I could use these, I could stuff dead leaves in the bags or pine needles as insulation from the ground. So, let's see if we can't do this real quick. Pass through the bag two or three times. And prop this bad boy up. I, I got no reason to keep this bag in good shape, but if I was, I would have no problem in a survival situation. If it was relatively warm, taking my shoe off and using it to keep the plastic from punching through. Let's get you guys adjusted in. I'll show you what I'm talking about. I've got plenty enough room now that sticks propping up my center it's going to keep me covered and it's plastic so it's waterproof so that's the first part of my camp let's go back to my kit and do our next piece which is our container and our fire okay guys now that I've kind of got my my tent made I'm gonna make my fire so I've got my flint and steel here with my kiridashi one piece of char cloth that I could make for my shirt and I would char this, even if I couldn't get friction fire going, I can make black dust with a friction fire. So there, here it comes. Sometimes this is not right off. I just gotta hit those fine fibers just right with a spark. And the funny thing is, is I wanted to use this type of rock for you guys to show you that even with marginal stone, it's possible to get an amber so this stone is breaking like crazy and I just gotta find a, a place to to hit my spark just right there we go an ember going now we'll put it in my bird's nest that I've made from cedar bark which I admit is pretty wet so baby Come on, there you go. There you go. 
be very careful with this because it is wet. Okay guys, last portion of my video I just wanted to show you. Here's my container that's holding water. Got plenty of water, whole container full of water. It's not leaking, it's not going to leak. This is an effective container for carrying water. It is metal, I can sanitize water with it. So I've got flame right here. Still going a little bit out of this bird's nest. That we started with flint and steel. Everything is so soaking wet, but I'm just trying to show you proof of concept. I got my full on shelter here from my shelter halves. So we've used cordage, we've used cutting tool, combustion, container, and cover. That's my 5C kit, guys. Stick with me. We got some more videos coming this week.